Hello, this is Aaron from Lo-Fi and DIY, and today I'm going to be talking about how to use my 4x5 GraphLock adapter with the Lomo GraphLock back. And the Lomo GraphLock back, of course, is a back that was introduced by Lomography, and it is a design for something that has a moving front standard. It is not designed for this type of camera, the type of camera that has a fixed front standard. Um, basically, I'm going to show you it on the Mamiya Universal Press, but the same thing I'm doing here can be done with the uh, Polaroid 600 SE, as it is basically the sister of the Mamiya Universal Press. Um, because it doesn't have a uh, movable front standard, um, the challenge is going to be that it only has a range to shoot between about portrait size. And some lenses, it might even shoot macro. But uh, it's basically portrait to macro sizes. In the case of the 127 millimeter lens, which is what I'm going to show you quickly today, um, it's basically portrait size and then group portrait size. That's pretty much the limitation. Um, you can see here, I've locked it in to the back. Now, normally my uh, Mamiya, I'm um, sorry, my, normally my uh, graph lock locking lugs are black, but for the sake of this picture, uh, it's easier to see them if they're white. Um, in the case of the Loma graph lock, you can see how, how deep it is. And because of the depth of it, they did not put the uh, actual film at the film plane. That's why if you're using something like a uh, uh, Graflex camera, uh, you don't have to necessarily uh, worry about it because they can adjust the front standard. But a camera like this, you cannot get a, um, an infinity shot with this back. And the only way I think you could get something close to a, an infinity shot is if you were shooting uh, pinhole, uh, because of course pinhole makes everything all the way into the distance uh, really sharp. So that that is the limitation with this. One thing I've added to this so it works better with this holder here is I just took a piece of electrical tape and put that strip right along the bottom there and it allows it to not slide around so much and it grips it just right. Uh, the problem with this particular design is the Loma graph lock is actually a little bit loose. And if you see right here, I put a strip of electric tape along there. You probably don't need to do that, but I did it anyway. Um, because the ridge is really hairline line thin. It's actually not a very good ridge. Uh, if you look at uh, many of the other graph lock uh, adapters, they aren't hairline thin like that. So that's why I put that there. Okay, this can snap right into the back of this. Okay, you just rock it in and you can kind of feel the groove. Once you felt the groove, then you go ahead and lock the sliders in place. Okay, um, once you've done that, it's ready, it's ready to use. Uh, of course, in the case of this, it has a dark slide. You would slide the dark slide out. I already have it out in this case. This is the dark slide. Um, you would slide the dark slide out and you'd be pretty much ready to shoot. Of course, the limitation is you can use the viewfinder, but you can't really use the rangefinder. The rangefinder will not help you at all. What I did as a uh, fix for this um, to be able to shoot in portrait and uh, group shots is I created a very simple system. I attached this to the tripod socket at the bottom. Uh, you could use string. You could use, as I have here, you could have beads on it and basically this line allows you if you're shooting um, you could say to the model hold this hold this bead right here up to your nose and that will allow them to get the exact focal the exact proper focal distance for this particular lens and take the shot the furthest one the square one here uh, that was for the group shot okay and then this little piece of tape here this is for a, a simple portrait shot Okay, the way I dialed that in, and this is a little tricky, the normal, uh, I made a, just a very standard ground glass here, very, very uh, simple. 
okay? And uh, that's the thickness of a normal one. Of course, in, in my case, again, I made it part white and part black. But that's about the thickness it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, this Lomograph lock does not play by those rules. So I had to make one substantially thicker. So it's actually the thickness of one of those normal ones, but I add 19 millimeters to the bottom, and then of course I put this groove in here so it grips. So I can actually use this, and you can see the groove right there for, for the backside. I could actually take this off of here, okay, and mount this right in there. And so when I'm mounting this right into there, let's see here, then I go ahead and tighten the lugs down, and then I can use this just like a normal uh, ground glass. And it will give me the image and what I'm looking at from that distance. And that's how I dialed in these beads on a length of, like I said, a length of wire in my case, but you could do it in a length of string. What I have this particular, the 127 on the Mamiya um, Universal Press, which should be the same as the 127 on the 600 SE, that's why I chose that lens. I have it as portrait 23 inches from the center of the tripod socket in the bottom, okay? And group portrait 40 inches, okay? And again, that's a 127 lens, okay? And so actually, let's see here, lay this aside. To give you an idea of some of the images, just a quick bunch of test shots I took. Um, I do use expired film and sometimes also film that's fogged by light because I actually will use a pack that's already been opened. Um, it allows me to save money on tests, but I also like the effect sometimes. So this is just a simple one. What, what I said was kind of a group shot. This is the group lens, that would be the uh, 40 inch distance, group portrait. And I took pictures of these glass bottles and that's natural light. I find that natural light is the best, the absolute best way to dial in um, your uh, ground glass for distances. So that's very sharp as you can see. Um, and, and here, using that same group shot, you see I get the, the head and the torso. In this case, that's my wife. And uh, so you can see, yeah, you can, and by the way, that again, that that uh, that fogging right there, that's because I use packs that have already been opened, packs that I find. Uh, I just like the uh, the effects it gives sometimes. Okay. Um, but then when I start shooting actual portrait shots, you can see it's it's much more zoomed in. Let's see if I can find. Okay. If you're familiar with the way the uh, the big shot behaves, as you can see, the portrait shots, and this is at uh, what did I say? Twenty three inches. Let me see. Yes, twenty three inches. At twenty three inches, this is the portrait shot, and you can see how the portrait shots are much more filled out of the face. And I took, a, took the shots at angles so I could get the uh, verticality of the portrait shot. Okay. Now, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, it's, it's actually very simple to use. The only hard part is to get it dialed into those distances. And like I said, any way you want to do that, is kind of up to you, um, but I find this whole thing of using a line with beads on it is the absolute easiest way to do it. It's very simple. You just ask the person, hey, hold this up to your cheek or hold it up to your nose or whatever, and then you take, you can say drop it, and then you take the picture, and it's perfect. Uh, really, really good, high, high resolution. So you can see in the case of this portrait shot, yeah, hopefully I can show the details there's just lots and lots of detail there it's what uh, all this beautiful mamiya glass can do um, so that's really helpful and um, you can see it's very simple the way i have my camera set up um, those are flash shots because we in ohio right now are experiencing 
a serious lack of daylight. So it's, it's not always easy in the middle of the uh, winter to take shots. Like I said, this is a 127 lens, okay? And I would just use this bead attached to, these beads attached to the uh, tripod socket on the very bottom of it in order to pull that forward. Now this right here, I've got this little timer attached. Uh, you don't have to do the, this, obviously. I just like to do it with instant film because it gives me an idea of how long it's been developing. Uh, development timer from Polaroid. Um, a little fun uh, fun mistake that I, I, I had, actually a lot of fun with this. Um, fun mistake that I had in the middle of the shots, though, and I just thought I'd share this you know, as a last little tidbit. Um, basically, I left it on one setting when I went to the other setting, and I had left it on the setting I use for ground glass, which is bulb, and uh, I had it on flash, bulb, flash, and wide open. This lens was wide open, and so, of course, it got flooded with light, and if you know anything about uh, instant film, when it gets flooded with light, sometimes it doesn't just blow out. It actually will give you a negative image, and I thought that was really fun, so... There's one of the portrait shots with the negative image, very green. There's another one. And another. And another. I thought they were very, very fun. So, okay, so that's it. And I will go ahead and uh, try to catch you up with my other products soon. Okay. Uh, this is my first try. I hope it uh, is informative. Thank you. Bye.